I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to the CCNA slash CCNP video practice exam on OSPF. OSPF is a huge topic on the BSCI exam, so when you're going after your CCNP, you will need to master this subject. The questions presented here are primarily for CCNA candidates, but it's also a good refresher for CCNP candidates as well. As always, we're under a 10 minute time limit here with YouTube, so what we're going to do is go through the questions fairly rapidly. There are a lot of choices with some of the questions, so feel free to pause the video if you need a little bit of extra time, and then we'll review the answers at the end of the video. Let's go ahead and get started here with question one. Which of the terms on the board accurately describe OSPF? And I'm not going to read all the choices to you here. We do have quite a few choices here with some of the questions. So pause the video if you need a little bit of extra time. Let's go on to question two. Which of the following algorithms does OSPF use? You learn a lot of different algorithms when you're working for, toward your CCNA, so we need to know which of those OSPF uses. Question three, what command resulted in the output here on the whiteboard? What OSPF related command, obviously since it says OSPF router with, what command resulted in that output? Question four, a little extra information here, not just OSPF related. Match the protocols RIP version 1, version 2, OSPF, and EIGRP to their respective reserved address. And obviously since we've got four protocols and five addresses, we do have one that's not going to be used there. So, let's go on to question five. Short answer here, in a hub and spoke OSPF NBMA network, what router should serve as the designated router, the DR? And in a related question, what is the recommended method of carrying out that task? So in question five, we're asked what router should be the DR, and now we need to know what the recommended method is of making that happen. Let's move on to question seven. I'm going to stroll, scroll down here more than a little bit. Identify the true statements regarding OSPF hello and dead timers on Ethernet segments or times, if you will. So we're talking about Ethernet segments here. Which of those statements is true? Let's go on to question eight. What command resulted in that output? And remember, if you get a question like this on an exam or you see something in a lab when you're running some debugs and show commands, that kind of thing, you, know, you can get a lot of output. Don't panic if you haven't seen it before. If you kind of look through it, you can get some clues as to what you're seeing here. So what command resulted in that output? Question nine, what command resulted in that output? This is a common OSPF command. We need to know this one and briefly describe the value shown under each of those categories. And we'll go on to question 10 from here. Put the following OSPF neighbor adjacency states in order starting with the earliest. And I've scrolled down there to show you all eight of them. So we've got quite a few details to go over here in the answers. And let's go out and do that. Let's go back to question one. Which of these terms describe OSPF? Will B and C do? Uh, OSPF is a link state protocol and the OSPF metric is referred to as cost. Let's hop to question two. Which of these algorithms? Well, actually two of them because SPF and the de Dijkstra algorithm, those are the same algorithm. Shortest path first. SPF and de Dijkstra are the exact same algorithm. Good detail to keep in mind. The command that resulted in this output, this is how you look at the OSPF database. It's the show IP OSPF database command. Not terribly common, not one you're going to use every day, but it's a good one to know. Scrolling down so we can look at all of these addresses, RIP version 1, the update packet destination address is a broadcast, so that would be D, the 250, all 255's address. RIP version 2 uses 224.009. EIGRP uses 224.0010, and OSPF finally is 224.005.
Now in this particular situation you should configure the hub to serve as the designated router. And there are a couple of ways to do this but really the preferred method of making it happen is to set the OSPF interface priority to zero on the appropriate interfaces on the spoke routers while leaving the hub's OSPF interface priority at the default of one. And we had quite a list here we'll be scrolling down for. We were talking about Ethernet segments here. So the true statements going from top to bottom. First, A is true. The uh, default hello time is 10 seconds. Now going down, the dead time is four times the hello time. And that's true of the other OSPF segment types as well. The dead time is four times the hello time. And then going down, changing the hello time dynamically changes the dead time as well is true. If you change the hello time, the dead time will dynamically adjust. It can be statically set, but it doesn't have to be. Let's take a look at question eight. Good troubleshooting command. Debug IP OSPF ADJ, short for adjacency. And here you could see that I highlighted mismatched hello parameters and that can cause an adjacency to not form or go down if you change it after the adjacency has actually been formed. So again, a very helpful OSPF debug here. It's debug, IP, OSPF, and then ADJ. Taking a look at question nine here, this is the output of show IP OSPF neighbor. And going from left to right, the neighbor ID, that is the OSPF RID of the neighbor. The PRI, that's priority, that's the interface priority of the neighbor. State, self-explanatory, it's the OSPF adjacency state and the role of the router, whether that be DR, BDR, or DR other. And here you can see it says DR, so we know that that particular router is the designated router for that segment. Uh, dead time, it's the time remaining until the adjacency is torn down. When a valid hello packet comes in, that timer is reset. For address, that's the IP address of the neighbor's interface through which the adjacency is formed. It can be the same as the neighbor ID, but not necessarily. And then finally, interface is the physical interface through which the adjacency has actually been formed. And question 10, putting all of these in order from earliest to latest, it's down, attempt, init, two-way, xstart, exchange, loading, and then finally full. So a lot going on with OSPF. This is a good basic review for you CCNA and CCNP candidates. If you're watching this on YouTube or another video sharing site, I have plenty of other practice exams and tutorials on these sites, especially on YouTube. You can also visit my tutorials page, thebryantadvantage.com slash tutorials.htm if you want to go straight to the tutorials page. Uh, actually, over 275 free Cisco tutorials out there right now. So again, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I'm Chris Bryant, CCI number 12933, and I'll see you at the website.